Before the films, there were the books. These are where Bond was born. You can't call yourself a true Bond fan until you've made your way through Fleming's novels. For this reason, they are also a crucial part of anyone's collection. Fleming wrote 12 Bond novels in total, along with two collections of short stories. All have titles recognisable to film fans, apart from a few of the short story names. The first four films, On A Majesty's Secret Service and, to a lesser extent, Casino Royale, all resemble their source material to differing degrees of accuracy. Some story details have changed for obvious reasons, but the outline, if nothing else, is there. Many Bond films have taken certain scenes from the books, but not necessarily from the book for which the film is named after. Keep a lookout for a video where I compare the differences between book and film. This isn't a video where I'm going to be reviewing or discussing the plot details of each novel, but simply telling you what books are out there for you to buy. The latest release in the UK is the vintage classic set. The cover art goes to the minimalistic approach, as you can see. The full set can be bought in a slipcase for around £20 and is readily available from most online bookstores or on eBay. Individual books can be as much as £4 each, so it's much cheaper to go for the full set. Vintage have another set, which feature real-life pictures on the front of each book. These are more expensive and are slowly becoming harder to come by. They're also not available in a full set, so you'd have to buy them all individually. In the US, the latest release is published by Amazon through their Thomas & Mercer imprint. I'm not sure what to make of these covers, opting for even more basic black and white designs. From the days of bright and vibrant, well-designed Bond cover art, these seem to be a step backwards. These are a bit pricier than their UK counterparts, retailing for the equivalent of £7 each. I can't seem to find a complete set of these, so if you are a completionist, you're going to have to do it the expensive way. Each set has matching versions of Fleming's two non-Bond non-fiction books, Thrilling Cities and The Diamond Smugglers. Both are based upon articles that Fleming wrote for the Sunday Times. Hardback books, on the other hand, are much harder to obtain. Rarer, with shorter print runs than their paperback versions, they can set you back a lot of money. The most recent hardback copies were published in 2008 to commemorate the centenary of Fleming's birth. They also had paperback versions of the same cover art design. These are even harder to find. These hardbacks, although only released six years ago, are worth a lot of money. Some people are trying to sell them for thousands, but a more conservative estimate would be from 100 to 200 pounds. There have been many cover art designs, but most famously, there are the original first edition hardbacks. These really can exchange hands for thousands of pounds. The first edition Casino Royale is the most sought after Bond book, but expect to pay north of £20,000. Whereas first editions of Octopussy or The Man with the Golden Gun, newer books, relatively speaking, can be less than £100. Likewise, there have been many versions of the paperback. I'm not going to run through them all. One, because it would take far too long, and two, every time I look on eBay, there seems to be a new version or variant that I've never seen before. Taking Casino Royale as an example, since 2000 alone we've had the Penguin and Viking edition in 2002, Penguin Modern Classics in 2003, Penguin Modern Classics again with a slightly different design in 2004, a Penguin reissue with an added introduction in 2006, a film tie-in version again in 2006, an Ian Fleming centenary edition in 2008, a vintage classics edition in 2012, and again a simple vintage edition in 2012 also. And this is just in the UK. I won't even go into the US publication history. Before that, Jonathan Cape had publishing rights, with versions released through Pan and Triad Panther Books, and Hodder and Stoughton then published from 1988 onwards. At the end of the day, unless you're a hardcore collector, one copy will be enough. As long as it's not an ebook version, because you do need something physical on your shelf to call yourself a collector. However, there is a great treasure trove of different cover art designs out there for people to collect. Look at me. I have six copies of Casino Royale alone, plus an ebook version so I don't have to crease the books anymore. There is what looks to be a great book called Bond Bound that was published in 2008 to accompany an exhibition. This unfortunately passed me by at the time and is now very expensive and difficult to obtain. This book, however, runs through the many various designs. As does another book that I've recently discovered called The Ian Fleming Bibliography. 
lots of pages but again very expensive and difficult to find. If there's anything glaring that I've missed or messed up please let me know. If there's anything you'd like me to do a video on suggest it and I'll see what I can deliver. Until next time, thanks for watching.